Just speak up too. Unit One: A Day at the Beach. Part One: Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker Number One: I prefer to go to the beach with my friends because we always have a lot of fun. I play games with my friends that my family doesn't usually play. We play volleyball, listen to music, and just talk. We also have fun in the water. Speaker number two. When I go to the beach with my friends, we like to talk a lot, especially about matters that we do not feel comfortable discussing in front of our parents. Of course, we talk about our favorite music and movies, but we also talk about guys and girls and who goes out with whom. Speaker number three. Yes. I like to bring food with me to the beach. I usually make sandwiches or hot dogs at home before I go. I don't like to cook at the beach because I usually just want to relax when I am there. Part three. Listen to each dialogue and read along. People. Where is the nearest beach to you? The nearest beach to my house is just a thirty-minute drive away. What is the weather usually like there? The weather there is usually very nice. How would you describe it? It can be hot or cool, and there's often a light breeze too. Activities. Why do people like to listen to music when they relax at the beach? It is very relaxing to listen to music. Music puts people in a good mood. Do you like to do that? I like to listen to music when I am lying on the sand. What do you usually use to do that? I usually bring my MP3 player with me. I have a lot of my favorite songs on it, so I just browse through them. Sometimes I make a special music playlist for the day, which I listen to. Food. When you go to the beach, what food do you usually prepare? I usually make sandwiches, hamburgers, or hot dogs. Sometimes I bring potato chips or a candy bar if I'm not staying at the beach for long. Why do you like to prepare this kind of food? These types of food are simple to prepare and are very tasty. How do you prepare this kind of food? We usually make the sandwiches at home. We make the hamburgers and hot dogs on the barbecue at the beach. My mom is a chef, so she cooks excellent food. Part six. Listen to each response. And match it to the question it answers. Response number one: Lifeguards are very important because their job is to make sure people are safe. There are usually a lot of small children at the beach, and sometimes their parents relax and don't concentrate on watching their children. Kids can go into the water and drown, so lifeguards should be there to help protect them. Response number two: People like to spend time at the beach because it is very relaxing. They like to hear the wind and the waves, and people laughing and having a good time. Because it gets very hot and the water is cool, people like to go swimming. Also, people can have fun with their friends. Response number three: Yes, I do. I like to play beach volleyball with my friends when we are at the beach. I am a good player. Because I live so close to the beach, I practice often, so I am better than most of my friends. Unit two, giving advice. Part one, listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one, you should stop smoking now because it will be more difficult to quit in the future. Smoking is an expensive habit. Smoking is also very bad for your health and can shorten your lifespan. There are patches that you can use to help you quit.
Speaker number two. If you want to be stronger, try building your muscles a little each day. Start with things that are a little heavy, but you can still lift them. Practice lifting and carrying these things each day. Slowly, try lifting heavier things as time goes by. This way, you'll get stronger over time. Speaker number three. You have to work hard to improve your writing skills. Reading books about how to organize your information may be a good idea. You can also study grammar. But really, the best way to improve your writing is to write a lot. Write something every day. Part 3. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Applying to University. What can I do to get accepted into the best university? First, you need to study hard and do well in your exams. You should also write a good essay for your university application. Why are high scores important? Getting high scores helps you gain admission into the university. What else will help me get a place at the university? Make sure you actively participate in your school extracurricular programs. That will also help you get a place in the university. Saving money. How can I improve my financial situation? Well, first you need to save as much money as you can. Look at your expenses and see which ones are not really necessary. What can I do to avoid wasting my money? Make a budget. Avoid spending money unnecessarily. Buy important things that you need. Don't spend too much on things like fast food, leisure, and entertainment. What should I do with the money that I save? Put it in a savings account at the bank. Then you always have some money in case of an emergency. Public speaking. How can I be more confident when I speak English in public? To build your confidence when you speak in public, you need to make sure you are well prepared for your presentation. How do I prepare for my presentation? You need to practice your presentation at home so that you know it well. Make sure you speak clearly. Time yourself so that you know how long your presentation is going to be. What can I do to make sure I remember what I need to say? You can prepare small note cards to use during your presentation. That will help you remember what you want to say. Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. I think you should go online and research your options first. That way, you can compare the features, specifications, and prices of various models. Response number two. If you want to be popular, try to be nice and helpful to everybody who needs help. You have to show people that you care about them. When people see how nice you are, they will start talking about you and your help. Response number three. It is not good when you fight. You are my best friends, and you need to learn how to work out your misunderstanding peacefully. I know you are hurt right now, but I think you should give her a chance to express her feelings and try to understand her. Unit three. Ailments and treatments. Part one. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one. When I have a stomach ache, I try to lie down and stop moving for a little while. Also, I usually eat a lemon. My grandmother told me it helps to stop a stomach ache. Speaker number two. When I have a toothache, I boil some peppermint tea with a pinch of salt in a cup of water and then I slowly drink all of it. This also helps with other aches and pains too. Speaker number three. When I have a fever, I don't feel like doing anything. I just want to lie in bed and rest. 
I usually don't feel like eating, but my mom always tries to give me soup or something. Part three. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Ailments. Besides taking medication, what method of reducing a high fever do you know? A good way to reduce a high fever is to cool your body. Describe it. When I was little and had a high fever, my mother used to make me take a cold shower. I would cry because the water was so cold, but it would make me feel better. Did your mother do anything else? Sometimes my mother would rub me with warm alcohol and put me in bed under a lot of heavy blankets. Food, drink. What do you do when you get a cold? When I get a cold, I do not go to a doctor. I just rest. How did your parents treat a cold? My mom used to make me stay in bed and drink lots of hot tea with lemon, honey, and ginseng. Did you like this treatment? Why or why not? I liked my mom's treatment for colds because it helped me relax. Methods. Besides going to the doctor or taking pills, what do you do if you get a headache? When I have a headache, I try to relax and sit or lie down comfortably. Do you do anything else? Yes, I massage the back of my neck where my head connects to my back. Sometimes I rub the area under my eyebrows close to my nose. Do you know of any other way to treat a headache? Well, some people find that acupuncture helps them. I have never tried it myself, so I'm not sure if it would help me. Part six. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number one. I know some home remedies for treating a sore throat that I learned from my grandmother. When I have a sore throat, I usually drink hot tea with honey and lemon. I also drink hot milk with a teaspoon of butter or baking soda in it. Also, rinsing your throat with salt water helps a lot. Response number two. When I have a toothache, I put some salt in a glass of warm water and then hold the salt water in my mouth for some time. If it doesn't help, I take a bit of garlic and put it behind my lip, next to the tooth that hurts. Response number three. Yes, I do believe it is effective. I tried it when I was younger because I often had earaches. My mother didn't know how to treat them, so she took me to the acupuncturist. He put thin needles in the area around my ears, and I stopped getting earaches after that. Unit four. Animals and pets. Part one. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one. I like cats better than dogs. Cats are quiet and they are easy to take care of. Dogs are noisy and you have to take them for walks all the time. Speaker number two. I am afraid of snakes. I don't know why they scare me so much, but they do. They move really fast on the ground, and they have smooth skin. Just thinking about them makes me nervous. Speaker number three. Yes, I think animals can react to their owners' feelings and moods because I have first-hand experience of that. I have a dog. When I am sad, he comes to me. Puts his head in my lap and looks in my eyes. I think that he tries to support me this way. When I am happy, my dog is usually happy too. Part three. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Animals. 
If you had a choice, what pet would you have? If I had a choice, I would have a horse. I like horses very much. I especially like white horses. Why do you like horses so much? Horses are so big and beautiful. They are also very intelligent. They can also run very fast. What would you do if you had a horse? If I had a horse, I would learn how to ride it. Since I live in the country and not in the city, I would love to go riding on the weekends. Descriptions. Do you or your friend have a pet? Describe it. I have a dog. He is a five-year-old poodle. He is small and white. His name is Sam. He is a very funny dog. Do you like to play with your dog? Yes, of course I like to play with my dog. When I throw a ball or a stick, Sam always runs after it to fetch it. He loves to play and go for walks. Where does your dog sleep at night? Sam usually sleeps in a kennel in the backyard at night. But if it is very cold, my mother sometimes lets him sleep in the house. Places. What is the most popular pet in your country? The most popular pet in my country is the canary. Why is it the most popular? Most of the people in my country live in big cities and have very small apartments, so they can't have big pets like dogs or cats. Birds are the most popular pets because they don't need a lot of space. Why do they not need much space? You can put a cage anywhere, even if your apartment is really small. Part six. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number one. Children can learn a lot of things from taking care of their pets. Most importantly, they can learn responsibility. You have to take care of them, love them, feed them, wash them, and clean up after them. Also, when they get sick, you have to take them to the vet. Response number two. I think it is fair to keep animals in zoos, though it depends on the type of zoo. I know that some zoos provide a lot of land and create a natural environment for their animals, so the animals are not in cages. They are free to walk around in their own private area. Also, zoos can give some rare or endangered species a chance to survive. Response number three. I think some people give human names to their pets to include them as part of the family. Pets also learn to respond to names and recognize when they are being spoken to. Having a name for a pet is also more familiar than not having a name at all, or simply referring to a pet as the dog or the cat. Unit five. Appearances. Part one. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one. The person who is sitting next to me is my friend Mary. She is quite tall and pretty. Her hair is dark and long, and she has big brown eyes. Speaker number two. My teacher is a little short. He looks very young, but I think he must be over thirty. He has short blonde hair. Speaker number three. A famous athlete in my country is Tiger Woods. He is thin and handsome. He has dark skin and short dark hair. I think his smile is very cute. Part three. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Face. What does your mother look like? My mom is tall and slender. Describe her face. She is not very old, but she has a lot of wrinkles on her cheeks and forehead. How old is she? She is in her forties. She says that she looks older because she worries about me so much. Hair. Who is the most beautiful girl in your class? I think Kim is the most beautiful girl in my class. What do you like about the way Kim looks? 
She is quite short and very slim. Kim has beautiful long straight black hair, which she usually wears in braids. What else do you like about the way Kim looks? She has a very nice smile, which people like. Body Who is the most famous athlete in your country? The most famous athlete in my country is Nicola Martinez. What sport does he play? He plays basketball. What does he look like? He is very tall and strong. He also cuts his hair very short. Part 6 Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1 A famous actress in the U.S. is Angelina Jolie. She is a very beautiful woman. She has dark, long, wavy hair. She wears her hair up or down. She has a very pretty face with big green eyes. Response number two. I would like to describe my father to you. He is a short, heavy guy. His hair is black with some gray on the sides. His forehead is very high. I think that makes him look smarter. Response number three. My aunt Cecile is a high school teacher. She is tall and thin. She has a short, neat haircut. She does not wear any accessories in her hair. She wears small gold rimmed glasses, which usually sit high on her nose. Unit 6 At the Doctors Part 1 Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one. The last time I went to the doctor was about six months ago. I had a bad sore throat at that time. The doctor gave me some pills and my sore throat went away after about a week. Speaker number two. It is important to get regular checkups with a doctor because a doctor can find problems when they are small. If you wait until you feel sick, the problem might be really big. Then the treatment will have to be more serious. If the problem is small, the treatment can be easier. Speaker number three. No, I would never consider becoming a doctor or a nurse. I don't like blood or gross things like that. I've never liked visiting hospitals, so I certainly don't want to work in one every day. Part 3 Listen to each dialogue and read along. People. How do you make an appointment to see a doctor? To make an appointment, I have to call the doctor's office and ask the receptionist if my doctor is available to see me on a certain date. How will the receptionist know if the doctor is available? The receptionist will check the doctor's schedule. If the doctor is free, the receptionist will schedule the appointment. I write down the appointment time so that I won't forget it. Actions. After the doctor diagnoses an illness, what does he or she need to do next? After diagnosing the problem, the doctor needs to explain it to the patient. Why is this important? People need to know about the condition of their health. They should ask the doctor questions if they don't understand something. What should the doctor explain to the patient? The doctor should explain how the patient got the illness or disease, what it is, and any treatment or medication that is needed. If the illness can be prevented in future, the doctor should explain how. Things. Who usually comes to visit you and to cheer you up when you are sick? When I get sick, my best friend Jenny comes to visit me. What does she do? We usually talk about books, music, and news at school. She also brings me homework from school. Does she bring you anything special? She often brings me chocolate, which I love. Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. Some people prefer to recover at home because they feel strange in hospitals. 
They say they feel more sick and lonely when they see a lot of sick people around them. My grandmother is like that. She never stays in the hospital, even if she is very sick. She prefers to recover at home. Response number two. It is necessary to check a patient's weight, temperature, and blood pressure before an appointment to see what general condition the person's body is in. If the person has a large increase or decrease in one of these levels, it can indicate a problem. Response number three. Some medication can be very dangerous. So it is very important to follow your doctor's directions closely. Some medication can be addictive. So the patient needs to know how much to take and when to take it. Taking too much or too little may cause the medication to be less effective or even harmful. Unit 7 Beauty Part 1 Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number 1 I think that people's actions make them attractive and popular. When people are helpful and sensitive to others, they always help their friends. As a result, they have a lot of friends, so people think that they are attractive. That's how they become popular. Speaker number two. I would rather date an intelligent person than a beautiful person. Beautiful people who aren't very intelligent are usually kind of rude. They think more about themselves than others. Intelligent people aren't usually like that. Speaker number three. I think beauty contests are silly. The women in those contests wear small bikinis to show off their bodies. They usually wear those bikinis with high heels. That really looks silly. Other kinds of contests like sports contests or talent contests are much better than beauty contests. Part 3. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Descriptions What is your definition of beauty? I think beauty is something that makes a person attractive to other people. It is something that can make people like or dislike you. Do you think beauty is mostly about how a person looks? No. In my opinion, beauty is not necessarily about your appearance, your clothes, or your hairstyle. What can make a person seem beautiful? To me, beauty is all about how you act toward the people around you. Actions What makes a person attractive? I think that people's actions make them attractive and popular. Explain how people's actions can make them attractive. When people are helpful and sensitive to others, they always help their friends. This makes them attractive. Do you think this is how a person becomes popular? Yes, kind and friendly people have a lot of friends. People think that they are attractive. That's how they become popular. Things Would you choose to be beautiful or intelligent? I would choose to be intelligent instead of beautiful. Why would you prefer to be intelligent instead of beautiful? For me, to be intelligent means to be beautiful. It is very boring to be with a person who is beautiful but not smart. Why is it boring to be with someone who is not intelligent? Well, mainly because you would have nothing to talk about after a while. If the person is intelligent, you could talk about many things. It is fun to be with intelligent people. Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. People often choose to have cosmetic surgery because they are not satisfied with some of their body features. For example, a woman may not like the shape or the size of her nose, so she might decide to change it to be more attractive. Some people have cosmetic surgery to help correct birthmarks or other physical conditions.
Response number two. People use makeup to improve some of their facial features and to make themselves more attractive. For example, women use mascara to make their eyelashes longer, so their eyes will look bigger and more attractive. Most women also use lipstick. People also use makeup if they are stage actors or film stars, so that they will look good on camera. Response number three. Yes, I think clothes can make a person more attractive. There is a famous saying: "The first impression counts." If you are invited to somebody's house and you are wearing dirty clothes, people will think that you always wear dirty clothes and that you have bad personal habits. Unit eight: Cars and driving. Part one. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one. No, I don't think that people should be allowed to use their cell phones when they drive because when you talk on the phone, you don't pay attention to the road. Speaker number two. A really good driver in my family is my dad. Of course, he has been driving for years. But I think he is a very careful driver. He hasn't been in any accidents that I can remember. Speaker number three. An advantage to owning a car is that you can go anywhere you want, and you don't need to wait for a bus or a taxi. However, it can be very expensive to own a car. Part three. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Actions. Can you drive? Yes, I can drive. My uncle started to give me driving lessons a few months ago. Are you a good driver? No, I don't think I'm a good driver yet. I am not very confident. What do you find hard to do when it comes to driving? Well, it takes me a long time to park in a small space. I can control the car with the steering wheel. But I still need to practice. Parts of a car. What safety features are important in a car? A safe car should have its engine in good condition. There should also be seat belts for the driver and passengers. Why are seat belts important? Seat belts are important if the car gets into an accident. The car should also have airbags in the front and sides. Seat belts and airbags can prevent the driver and passengers from getting injured. What else does the car need? The car also needs good brakes and good tires. This is to make sure that it can stop safely at any time. People. What are the advantages of having a car? When you have a car, you can go anywhere you want, and you don't need to wait for a bus or a taxi. What about the disadvantages of having a car? It can be very expensive to own a car. Even if you get a cheap car, you still need to spend money on insurance, gas, and other things like that. You need to take your car to a mechanic regularly as well. Would you get a car even with these disadvantages? Yes, because I think the advantages of having a car outweigh the disadvantages. Every man or woman should have a car if he or she can afford one. Part six. Listen to each response. And match it to the question it answers. Response number one: I think a car is a necessity. I have a very cheap car, but I like it. It helps me to go anywhere I need. Some places are far away and don't have bus routes, so when I need to go to these places, the car is really the only convenient option. Response number two. When people break driving rules, they put other people's lives in danger. I think that people should be fined heavily or even given a prison sentence, depending on how serious the actual offense is. Response number three: You need to keep the car in good condition. You have to change the oil regularly and maintain the engine properly. 
You should bring the car in for servicing regularly to check that all the parts are in good condition. Unit 9 Celebrating Birthdays Part 1 Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number 1 The most memorable gift I have received for my birthday is a watch that I still wear. My father gave it to me for my 14th birthday. Speaker number 2 I usually buy birthday cakes from a bakery. I don't know how to make or decorate a cake. Cakes from the bakery taste better than anything I could make. Speaker number 3 No, my friends have never thrown a surprise birthday party for me. I guess my friends are too busy to plan that kind of thing. Most of the time, we plan our parties all together so that we can be sure everyone will be there. Part 3 Listen to each dialogue and read along. Things. Do you buy party invitations or do you make them yourself? I like to make my own birthday party invitations because I enjoy drawing and I think I am quite good at it. How did you learn to make them? My art teacher taught me how to make all sorts of different cards. Explain how you make your party invitations. I use materials like colored paper and watercolors to make my invitations. Usually I draw flowers, birds, hearts, or ribbons on each card. Food. Is there a traditional birthday party food in your culture or in your family? I don't think there is a traditional birthday food in my culture, but we have a tradition in my family to celebrate birthdays. Explain this family tradition. My mother usually prepares a special pie for dinner. It is very big, and she puts vegetables and some meat in it. It's always delicious. What other kinds of food do you usually eat to celebrate a birthday? We always have a big birthday cake ice cream, and fruit. People, places. Whom do you usually invite to your birthday party? Usually I invite some of my best friends from school and some of my friends from my neighborhood. How many people do you usually invite? I don't like big birthday parties, and our house is very small, so I can't invite a lot of people. I usually invite between five and seven people. What if you have your party in a restaurant instead of at home? If I have the party in a restaurant, I can usually invite a few more guests. It depends on the restaurant. If it is small, then I still invite 5 to 7 people. If it is big, I invite up to 12 people. Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. I like to celebrate my birthday at home. It is more comfortable to celebrate your birthday at home because you have more control over the things that you do and the things you can have. If I do go somewhere, I usually go to a restaurant. Response number two. If I want my party to be a success, I need to keep a lot of things in mind. First, I have to prepare my birthday party invitations. Then I give them to my friends. After that, I start planning my birthday meal, games, and activities. Response number three. People play different games at birthday parties. Some people play cards or guessing games. The most famous traditional party game in my culture is hitting a piñata. It is made of paper in the form of an animal, a star, or another shape. We put a lot of candy inside and hang it from a tree outside. Each person has to take turns covering their eyes and trying to hit the piñata so that it breaks and the candy falls out. Unit 10. Cell Phones Part 1. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. 
Speaker number one. Everyone in my family has a cell phone. My father and mother both have their own cell phones. Even my younger sister has a cell phone. She just got one last year for her birthday. Of course, I have one too. Speaker number two. My last cell phone bill was not very expensive. It was only twenty-five dollars. I didn't use any extra minutes or anything, so I just had to pay the regular monthly fee. Luckily, my service has free text messaging. I use text messaging a lot. Speaker number three. It is important to turn off your cell phone in a movie theater because it might ring during the movie. Then the people around you would be bothered by the noise. They paid money to see the movie, and if a cell phone rings, it ruins the mood for everyone. Part three. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Descriptions. Do you have a cell phone? Yes, I have a cell phone. I got a new one recently. My old cell phone was too big and heavy. I like my new phone better. What kind of cell phone is your new one? It is a black flip phone. It's not a fancy one. Why did you choose this particular phone? I chose it because it's very small and light, and it fits in my pocket very neatly. I also like the color. Things. What features does your cell phone have? My cell phone has a lot of useful features. It has a camera that I can use to take photos whenever I see something interesting. Does it have any other features besides a camera? Yes, it has an MP3 player, so I can listen to music on my way home from school. It also has some games that I can play. When do you usually play games on your cell phone? I usually play games on my cell phone when I am bored or I have nothing to do, like when I'm walking home or waiting for a bus. Actions. Why are cell phones more popular than landline phones? Cell phones are more popular than landline phones because you don't have to be at home to make a call. A cell phone is portable. Aren't there payphones that people can use to make calls from? Yes, but if you have a cell phone, you don't have to look for a phone on the street. Do you think cell phones are convenient to have? Definitely. Having a cell phone is so convenient, especially in an emergency. You can just open your bag, take your cell phone out, and make a call. Part six. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number one. There are some disadvantages to having a cell phone. First, cell phones can be distracting. They can be very addictive and cause you to spend too much time sending text messages to your friends. Second, if you constantly use them to text or download things, they can be very expensive. Response number two. It is very convenient to have a text message feature on my cell phone because sometimes I need to contact someone without disturbing other people in the room. Sometimes, when I am in the car with my parents, I don't want them to know what my friends and I talk about, so I send text messages. Response number three. Yes, there absolutely should be a law prohibiting cell phone use while driving. Because you are distracted, you can't control the situation very well. A lot of accidents happen because of this. I think if you have to make a call, you should stop, make it, and continue driving only after you have finished the call. Unit Eleven, Chores. Part One. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one: When people have a front and a backyard in their homes, they need to mow the grass and make sure that it gets enough water. If there are any trees or flowers, they need to be pruned or taken care of. Speaker number two: 
The nearest supermarket to my home is located about two blocks away. I can walk there. Of course, when I walk, I can't buy too much. I have to carry everything home. Speaker number three. One chore at home that I'm responsible for is making my bed. It doesn't take long. I do it every morning after I get dressed. But when I forget, my mom gets really mad. Part three. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Places in a house. Who does the cleaning in your house? My mom usually does the cleaning in our house because she is a housewife and works at home. What does your mother usually do each time she cleans the house? In the morning, she usually takes us to school, and then she dusts the furniture, vacuums the carpets, and puts things in their places. What else does she do? She also tidies up quickly before we all go to bed. People. Who organizes the bills in your family? My father usually pays the bills and balances the checkbook. It is important to pay your bills on time, and my father is a very responsible person. How much time does he spend doing this, and where does he do it? He spends two hours every weekend organizing the family bills at his computer in his home office. Does he enjoy doing this chore? Yes, he prefers this chore to cleaning. He is an accountant after all. Things. Who does the laundry in your house? My older sister and brother usually do the laundry in our house each weekend. How do they do the laundry? First, they collect the dirty laundry from each member of the family. Then they sort the laundry into piles, like whites, colors, and towels. What happens next? They put the clothes into the washing machine, add detergent, and choose the washing cycle. When the clothes are clean, they put them into the dryer. Part six. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number one. My mom usually does the grocery shopping in our family because she loves to cook. She makes sure that all the groceries are fresh. She buys milk and meat in one store, vegetables from the farmers market, and bread in a bakery so that it is fresh. Response number two. Yes, it is my responsibility to keep my room clean because my parents get angry with me if I don't. I hate doing it. I usually leave my clothes, my books, and other stuff on the floor. My mom makes me pick them up every day. Also, I have to vacuum the room and make my bed every morning. Response number three. Yes. Everybody should share in doing the chores in the family, because it can be difficult for one person to keep the house clean if he or she has to do all the work. Everyone should participate. I think even young children should be responsible for helping with the chores. They can pick up their toys and keep their rooms tidy. Unit twelve, your hometown. Part one. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one. I grew up in a suburb. There was a big city about twenty minutes away from where I grew up. Sometimes I went into the city to museums or to the zoo. Speaker number two. The biggest park in my hometown is City Park. There is a playground there and a small lake. People usually jog or ride bikes around the lake. Speaker number three. People in my hometown have all kinds of jobs. I guess most people work in offices. There are also lots of stores and restaurants. There aren't any big factories or farms in my hometown. Part three. 
Listen to each dialogue and read along. Nature. Describe the location of your city. My city is located in the center of a valley, and there are beautiful mountains surrounding it. Do you like being surrounded by mountains? Yes, I love it. The mountains around the city are not very high, but they are very old. They protect the city from strong winds and heavy rains. How far is the city from the sea? The city is very far away from the sea, but there are some beautiful lakes nearby. Descriptions. Where is the best restaurant in your city located? The best restaurant in my city is located not far from my house, near the city center. What kind of food does it serve? This restaurant serves the traditional food of my country, which is delicious. Would you recommend this restaurant? Oh yes, I would definitely recommend it because it is unique. It is the biggest and the most expensive restaurant in the city, but it is worth it because the food is really good. Transport. Describe the public transportation system in your city. Because the city I live in is very big, public transportation is very important. Luckily, we have a good bus and subway system. Do people prefer to use public transport there? Yes, mainly because it's very convenient. People don't have to drive their cars into work and waste time in traffic jams in the morning. What other types of transport do people use to get around your city? People don't normally waste money on a taxi in my city. People who live in the suburbs usually take the train into the city. Some people like to use bicycles to get around. Part six. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number one. I think the most beautiful street in my city is Main Street because there are many opportunities for good sightseeing. It runs through the center of the city, and the most beautiful buildings are located there. For example, there is our city museum, an old movie theater, the old train station, and other interesting spots. Tourists love to go there. Response number two: People who live in my city have a lot of educational opportunities. First, one of the best universities in the country is located here. It is also one of the biggest universities in the country. We are very proud of this fact. A lot of students from other parts of the country and abroad come here to study. Response number three: Some people think that the center of our city is very beautiful. It is very old and traditional. You can't see any modern buildings there. People try to preserve the downtown area so that it presents the history of our city, but I'm not sure that I like how it looks. I prefer cities that look modern. Unit thirteen, clothes and fashion. Part one. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one. My favorite color to wear is brown. I like brown because it is not too casual or too fancy. I can wear brown on just about any occasion to any place. Speaker number two. My best friend and I dress very differently. My best friend usually wears name brand clothes. She has more money than me, so she can afford those kinds of clothes. I can't. Speaker number three. Yes, I think it's a good idea for kids in school to wear uniforms. If all the kids wear the same clothes, they don't have to worry about fitting in or not fitting in with others. Everybody dresses the same. So all the kids can be comfortable around each other. Part three. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Clothes. What made you choose the clothes you are wearing today? Today I am wearing my favorite purple shirt because I think purple looks good on me.
What are you wearing on your feet? I am wearing these old white sneakers because they are comfortable. What else are you wearing? I am also wearing my new denim jacket. I bought it yesterday. Colors. What colors do not go well together? I think that bright colors do not go well together. Can you give an example of what you mean? Well, for example, I don't think it looks nice when someone wears a yellow blouse and green pants at the same time, or a red and purple dress. Why do you think so? I think these colors are just too bright, so people shouldn't wear them together. However, I do understand that not everybody's taste is the same. Descriptions. Describe your favorite item of clothing. My favorite item of clothing is my old pair of blue jeans. I'm wearing them right now. Why is it your favorite? I like wearing these jeans because they are very comfortable. Also, they are dark, so you don't really notice when they get dirty. How often do you wear these jeans? I wear these jeans as often as I can. I love them. If I could, I would wear them every day. Part six. Listen to each response. And match it to the question it answers. Response number one: There are traditional clothes that people wear for their wedding ceremonies in my country. The groom usually wears a dark or light suit, a white shirt, and a bow tie. The bride usually wears a long white gown and a veil. Response number two. I find it unattractive when people wear too many accessories. Ladies sometimes wear a lot of similar bracelets on one wrist, which is nice. However, I don't like it when they wear a lot of jewelry at the same time, like earrings, bracelets, and necklaces all at once. In my opinion, it is just not attractive. Response number three. I like it when people wear special styles on special occasions. For example, I like it when men wear business clothes like suits, shirts, and ties if they work in an office. I like when women wear nice dresses when they go out. Unit fourteen, clothes for special occasions. Part one, listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one. For a job interview, I would wear a suit and tie. The suit that I have is dark gray. I have a few ties. I like my red the best, so I would probably wear that one. Speaker number two. I usually wear pajamas to bed. I have one pair of summer pajamas and one pair of winter pajamas. The summer pajamas are made of cotton. But the winter pajamas are made of wool. Speaker number three. Yes, I have worn a costume before. I wore one for a costume party at my friend's house. I dressed up like a rabbit. It was really funny. Part three. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Clothes. What clothes do you wear at home? When I am at home, I like to wear comfortable clothes like shorts and a t-shirt. Sometimes I wear a bathrobe or pajamas. Why do you like to wear these clothes at home? I feel very comfortable in shorts and a t-shirt or in pajamas. These clothes are very casual and loose, so I can move around easily. What do you wear on your feet when you are at home? I like to wear slippers or flip-flops in the house. On your feet. What do you usually wear at school? I study at a private school, so we have to wear uniforms to school. I like my school uniform. What is your school uniform like? Girls in my school wear a white blouse and a striped red and black skirt. What do you wear on your feet at school? We wear black knee-high socks and black boots. Oh, and we usually wear sneakers when we play sports. Accessories. What accessories do women usually wear with their clothes? 
Women usually wear accessories like belts, hats, and scarves. They also like jewelry such as earrings, rings, bracelets, and necklaces. Why do you think women like jewelry? I think most women like jewelry because it's bright and shiny and it looks beautiful. Jewelry can also be valuable. How do you think women choose their accessories? I think that they choose accessories to suit both the clothes they are wearing and the occasion. Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. After taking a shower or bath, I like to stay warm for a while. I wear my bathrobe. It is very long and very soft. I also wear my fuzzy white slippers. Sometimes when it is cold in the house, I wear my fleece pajamas. Response number 2. I like to wear a cool original costume to a costume party. First, I ask my friends if they have a special theme for the party. For example, if the theme is comics, everybody is supposed to dress as superheroes or villains. If the costume party is just for fun and there is no theme, I try to wear the funniest costume I can think of. Response number 3. In my country, New Year's Eve is a special holiday. We believe in horoscopes, so every year we check our horoscope to see what colors should bring us luck and prosperity next year. For example, if it is red, we try to wear red clothes. If it is blue, then we try to wear blue. The clothes we wear depend on our horoscopes. Unit 15 Color Part 1. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number 1. I think green and brown go well together. You often see these colors together in nature, like on plants and trees. If it looks good in nature, it should look good on people. Speaker number 2. Most of the people in my family have dark hair. I guess they all have black hair. My aunt sometimes dyes her hair different colors like brown or reddish brown. Speaker number three. My bedroom has white walls. The floor of my bedroom is light brown. There is a wood like covering on my floor. The blanket on my bed is pink and yellow. I guess my room has lots of colors in it. Part 3. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Color. What colors are you wearing today? I'm wearing my favorite colors, gray and blue today. Describe your clothes and their colors. I'm wearing a gray t shirt. It is my favorite shade of gray. It matches the color of my eyes. I am also wearing a pair of light blue jeans. Why did you choose these clothes and these colors? I love wearing jeans and t shirts because they are so comfortable. Also, I think gray and blue go very well together. Things. Why do you think women try to wear color coordinated clothes, shoes, and handbags or purses? Women try to wear color coordinated clothes because they can look stylish. Are there any colors that you consider unattractive? I think mostly colors by themselves are attractive, but mixing bright colors like pink and orange can be considered unattractive. What is an example of good style? It is considered good style if the color of your shoes matches the color of your dress. Or your shoes match your purse. Actions. What color would you like to decorate your house in? I would like to use different shades of gold when I decorate my house. Why would you like to decorate your house in gold? Because gold is the color of wealth and success in my culture. I'm glad it's not silver, because I don't like that color as much as I like gold. We paint our houses in shades of gold when we decorate them. Would you paint the outside of your house in gold as well? Yes, I would paint the outside of my house in a very pale shade of gold, almost like beige.
Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. Being caught red handed means that somebody is caught while doing something wrong. For example, a thief is caught while trying to rob a house. One day, my little brother was trying to steal the cookies from the kitchen cabinet, but my mom walked in at just the right moment and caught him. Response number two. For me, yellow is the color of sadness. When I am sad, the objects around me sometimes look blurry, as if they are behind a yellow fog. I also feel very sad and a little depressed when I am in a yellow room. Response number three. The colors of my national flag are green, red, and white. Green stands for agriculture. We grow a lot of crops and vegetables in my country because we have a very mild climate, and they grow well. Red stands for the many wars, revolutions, and conflicts in the history of my country. Red is the symbol of the blood of the people who died for the freedom and independence of my country. White means freedom, I think. Unit 16. Computers and Technology. Part 1. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number 1. There are two computers in my house. One of them is a desktop computer, the other is a laptop computer. My sister and I share the desktop, my parents share the laptop. Speaker number two. I got my first cell phone when I was 15 years old. My parents wanted me to have it because I had to stay late at the library to study. They thought it was safer for me to have one in case anything happened when I was going home at night. Speaker number three. One kind of machine that you can find in most offices is a fax machine. Most offices also have copy machines for employees to use. Of course, there are probably several computers in just about every office. Part 3. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Actions. How old were you when you learned to use a computer? I was very young when I learned to use a computer, maybe about six years old. Who taught you how to use it? My father taught me how to use it because he wanted me to use CD ROMs that helped me to improve my reading, math, and writing skills. Did you ever use the computer just to have fun? Sure. On weekends, my parents let me play games on the computer. Descriptions What is the role of the Internet in international communication? The Internet makes international communication fast and accessible. What do you think of email? Email is an important communication tool. It is very easy to send letters via email. They arrive instantly at the click of a button. What other types of communication can we use the Internet for? We can communicate through conference calls and video conferencing. Things What do you think life would be like without electricity? I can't imagine my life without electricity. Electrical items are so much a part of our lives that it would be hard to live without electricity. What is your favorite electrical item? My coffee maker. I like to have a cup of coffee in the morning. How would I be able to make coffee without using my coffee maker? What else would you find difficult to live without? Well, electric light bulbs are also very important to me. I read a lot and I need enough light, especially at night. Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. Cell phones are very important nowadays because they let people communicate with their loved ones almost instantly. Also, in case of an emergency, there is no need anymore to look for a landline phone to call the police or an ambulance.
Response number two. Digital cameras make our lives so much easier because if you have one, you don't have to worry about having enough film when you are getting ready for a party or a picnic. Also, you can actually see how your picture looks as soon as you take it. You can delete photos that aren't good without wasting money printing them. Response number three. Nowadays, computer literacy means a lot of things. First, it means that you are familiar with major hardware and software for your computer. Second, it means that you know how to use the computer itself. Computer literacy also includes internet literacy, which means you know how to use the World Wide Web for different purposes. Unit 17 Crime Part 1 Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number one. Yes, one time someone stole some things out of my apartment. They came in through an open window when I wasn't home. I was scared when I got home and found everything a mess. Speaker number two. Sure, it's safe to walk on the streets of my hometown after dark. Actually, there are always people out walking around after dark. There are lots of people around, so nobody can really do anything bad. Speaker number three. It's dangerous to join a gang because you can get hurt or killed. Gangs are always fighting with other gangs. In those fights, some gang members get seriously hurt, and sometimes one or two of them get killed. Part 3. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Actions. What are some of the different reasons that people break laws? I think that people break laws to get money and other things that they want without working for them. What are some crimes that you know of? Thieves, burglars, or robbers break into people's houses to rob them. They take other people's property. Sometimes people get mugged. Why do you think people do these things? I think some people commit crimes because they are angry or are rebelling against something. Things. What do you know about the crime rate in your city? The crime rate is very high in my city. Crime against people's property, such as robbery and burglary, is especially high. Is the crime rate rising or falling? I think it is rising because I read about it more often in newspapers. Do you consider it high or low compared to other cities? I think the crime rate is very high, much higher than in other cities, so we need to do something about it. People. Should teenagers be punished for crimes in the same way as adults? No, I don't think that teenagers should be punished for all crimes in exactly the same way as adults. They should be considered children. Are there any crimes that might be special cases? Teenagers should get the same punishment as adults only for terrible crimes like murder or for crimes using guns or other weapons. How should we deal with teenage criminals? These teenagers should be given a lot of counseling. As punishment, they can do community service. Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. People can stay safe on the streets of big cities by taking reasonable precautions and by using their common sense. For example, if you know that you will be walking a lot, you should not wear a lot of attractive jewelry and accessories. Also, you shouldn't walk through alleys, especially at night. Response number two. Some teenagers choose to join gangs because of peer pressure. They want to have friends and they feel that joining a gang will help. Being in a gang is considered cool, so teenagers join without thinking of the consequences. Response number three. 
Yes, we should have stricter laws for some crimes. For example, driving under the influence of alcohol, DUI, or drunk driving is very dangerous for pedestrians and other drivers. Many people are killed each year. We should have a stricter punishment for it, so we can save more people's lives. Unit 18 Education Part 1 Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number 1 No, I would not like to become a teacher. I think teachers have to work too hard and they don't make much money. I would rather find an easier job. Speaker number 2 My favorite class last year was math. I know a lot of people don't like math, but I think it's fun and interesting. My math teacher last year was also very good. He explained things really well. Speaker number 3 I usually study in my bedroom at home. My computer is there, and I do a lot of my assignments on the computer. My room is also very comfortable for me. So, I can relax and concentrate there. Part 3 Listen to each dialogue and read along. Actions What motivates you to learn? Getting good grades and a good school report, learning something new every day. And working toward a better future motivate me to learn. How do your parents encourage you to learn? When I get good grades, my parents are very happy. Then they are proud of me. That is enough to encourage me. What kind of career would you like? I would like to be an engineer because I like science. People. Do you think that teachers get paid enough for their work? No, I do not think that teachers get paid enough for their work. Compared to professional athletes, teachers earn much less money. Do teachers work fewer hours compared to other careers? No, because teachers work all the time at school, after school, and sometimes they grade students' papers at home. Do you think a teacher's job is important? Yes, I think teaching is a very important job. Teaching the future generation of the country is an important responsibility. Schoolwork Describe a difficult assignment from one of your classes. Once my English teacher gave us an assignment to write an essay about our personal heroes, it was pretty difficult. Why was it difficult? I couldn't think of any heroes or role models in my life. I didn't know anybody to use as an example for my essay. How did you complete the assignment? Finally, I thought of my neighbor, Mr. Cho, who was a war veteran. Remembering the stories he told me helped me to write my essay. Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. No, they should not because parents' goals for their children can be very different from what their children really want out of life. They can talk to their children and give advice and recommendations, but they should not force their children into any decisions. For example, my parents are both highly qualified doctors, and they would like me to become a doctor too. But I want to be a musician. Response number two The best university is located in the capital city in my country. It is also the biggest university. Around 10,000 students graduate from this university every year. There are various colleges in the university, and students can choose from many majors. Response number three. Yes, absolutely. Students nowadays learn much more than their parents in the past because world technology is developing fast. To be literate and well informed now means having much more knowledge than before. Students and teachers have access to computers and computer software, as well as good libraries and other modern facilities.
Unit 19. Emergency Responses and First Aid. Part 1. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number 1. I read some books about first aid, but I never took a class about it. I don't really like the sight of blood, so I'm probably not a good person to do first aid for anyone. Speaker number two. Once I got some dirt in my eye. My friend helped me by holding open my eye and getting the dirt out. Then he poured some cold water over my eyes. That was first aid. Speaker number three. No, I've never seen a real emergency situation. The only emergency situations I have seen were on television. I like to watch shows about saving people's lives. Maybe I will try to be a doctor or fireman in the future. Part 3. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Things. What is an emergency situation? Any situation where someone is in danger is an emergency situation. Give an example of an emergency situation. One example is when a small child is alone in a house playing with matches and he accidentally starts a fire. This is an emergency situation. Why is it important to respond quickly in an emergency like that? It is important to react fast because fire spreads very quickly. Parts of the body. What is cardiopulmonary resuscitation? CPR. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation is a technique to start a person's heart after it has stopped. Describe a CPR technique. First, you position the person's head so that his or her mouth is open. Pinch the person's nostrils shut and blow air into his or her lungs through the mouth. Then you press hard on the person's chest several times. Have you been trained to perform CPR? Yes, I was trained to perform CPR in school. Actions There is a fire in your house. The hallway, the only way to escape, is on fire. Describe how you should act in this situation. I would close the door of the room and grab a piece of cloth, like a sheet or a blanket, and push it tightly under the door. Why is this important? This is important so that the smoke can't come into the room. Inhaling smoke can be very dangerous. What would you do next? Then I would open the window and shout for help. If I had a cell phone, I would call the fire department immediately. Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. First, I would immediately pour cold water all over myself. Maybe I would jump in the shower to do that. Then I would call the emergency response number and let them know about my situation. If I could, I would go to the hospital right away. Response number two. If I saw a hit and run accident, I would first try to memorize the car's license plate number. Then I would run to the injured person and check on the condition of anyone hurt in the accident. I would not move the hurt person at all, because this could be dangerous. Then, if nobody else was around, I would call the emergency response number. Response number three. It is important to know your emergency response telephone number because you have to call it in case of an emergency. You should display it in visible locations, like right next to your phone or on your fridge. Everybody in the family, even small children, should know the emergency response number and how to call it. Unit 20 Entertainment Part 1. Listen to the speakers. Write the questions that they answer. Speaker number 1. No, I don't really like to go dancing. The places where my friends like to dance are always very loud. The music there hurts my ears. 
I would rather spend time with my friends doing other things. Speaker number two. The last theater performance that I saw was a play at my school. I don't go to real theaters to see plays or shows. The tickets are too expensive. I can't afford to go to the theater. Speaker number three. I like playing card games more than board games. You need some skill to play cards really well. Board games are usually just luck. I'm pretty good at the card game called Bridge. Part 3. Listen to each dialogue and read along. Things. What is your idea of having fun? My idea of having fun is doing something relaxing and enjoyable with my family or my friends. What is an activity that you enjoy with family or friends? Well, I like it when we do some kind of outdoor activity together, like going on a picnic or just playing in the park. Do you prefer to spend time with your family or your friends? My friends are fun, but I prefer spending time with my family. Actions. Do you like going to parties? Yes, I love going to parties. Why do you like going to parties? I love going to parties because I can make new friends, have good food, play funny games, and just talk to my friends. What do you like best about parties? The best part is meeting new people. I like to meet new people, so I always look forward to big parties where I'll see lots of new faces. Descriptions. Do you have a friend who is very sociable and is good at entertaining friends? Yes, I have a friend like that. Her name is Marie. Describe this friend. Marie is the most sociable and outgoing person I know. No matter where she goes, she can make everyone happy in no time. She is so friendly. Apart from being sociable, what is your friend good at? She is really good at telling jokes, but she never tells too many at one time. She knows exactly what to say at the right time. Part 6. Listen to each response and match it to the question it answers. Response number 1. Yes, I like to watch opera. When I was an elementary school student, my parents wanted me to learn how to play the piano. They hired a music teacher for me. I hated it at first, but later I learned to love classical music and opera. Response number two. People like to visit theme parks because they provide fun and relaxation for the whole family. You do not have to be a kid to enjoy theme parks like Disneyland. Even adults can have lots of fun there. I would like to visit SeaWorld because I like seeing all the different types of sea creatures. Response number three. My favorite movie is The Last Samurai with Tom Cruise. It is my favorite because it has great action scenes, shows how a person can change, and talks about important principles. It also shows a particular moment in Japanese history. <laughs>